Good morning, everybody. My name is Jacob. Yes, no work. Should if you can understand me, please ask me to repeat myself who understood it. Thank you so much. So I'm here to talk about the Independent Living Research Center, we're a disability non-profit in town. In fact, we count keywords. We serve the tri-counties. So as a center borrower, renter, and we offer a system tech Technology advocacy benefits for all people with all types of disabilities, no matter what age, no matter what disability we can help you. All our services are free and we do not as for immigration status or drug dudes. No, it's just you have a disability, you can get services from us. We're here today to talk about the big issue of housing accommodation and how to access housing that's most accessible and affordable if you have a disability. I would like to introduce my co-worker Patrick Jowin who runs our housing advocacy services. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Petra. Everybody can hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, accessible housing can mean different things for different people. For a wheelchair user, obviously, uh, no stairs is the most important uh, aspect. And, and also, uh, for example, the bathroom needs to be big enough for a wheelchair to be able to turn around. Um, and the whole configuration of the apartment makes a difference. If someone is blind, uh, it can help, for example, on the stove, they can put markers or uh, what the temperature is um, and a lot of organization. Someone who's deaf, they have uh, visual uh, um, doorbells. Uh, some people who are deaf have a dog that can alert them if someone is uh, coming to the door. <clears throat> so uh, each person has their own needs when it comes to accessibility and they need to be uh, individually addressed. When it comes to law uh, for renters, uh, landlords cannot deny someone with a disability who needs modifications, or uh, they can't deny that that happens. However, the law also says the landlords don't have to pay for it, which makes sense because otherwise, landlords would have absolutely no incentive to rent to someone who needs modifications. Um, I found this. This is a great resource, California Tenants, a guide to um, residential tenants and landlords' rights and responsibilities. This is actually great for tenants and landlords. And you can download it in PDF form uh, from the website. Uh, as far as paying for modifications, this only has one little paragraph which basically just states what, what I said. Landlords cannot deny uh, making an apartment accessible, uh, but uh, the tenant has to pay for it. Now, I would think there's probably some negotiation possible. For example, if the only thing that you need is grab bars in your uh, grass tub and shower uh, to make it uh, safer for you, that kind of would be an improvement for the apartment. So if the landlord is really nice, they might say, yeah, I'll pay for that. And if not, then uh, the tenant would pay for it. Uh, some of the improvements, the landlord can actually require <clears throat> that uh, the tenant make, uh, undoes it when they move out. Uh, for example, if it's a ramp, 
Uh, that's why usually temporary ramps are the, the best. Uh, they can be uh, like made out of wood um, <clears throat> to uh, cover whatever they need to. Uh, when it comes to ramps, uh, there's a, a, a big consideration how many steps do they have to cover. If it's a bunch of steps, the ramp would have to be extremely long or would be very steep. Uh, so it's easiest if there's only a couple steps or ideally one step. Um, so like I said, the landlord uh, at the end of the tenancy can ask the tenant to tear it out whatever they had uh, put in. Uh, it gets even more complicated if you're dealing with a condo complex where there's a homeowners association because typically everything, any changes have to be approved by the board of directors of that homeowners association. So sometimes that can become extremely difficult and sometimes they're not very nice, you know, they don't understand disability. Um, so it's much easier to deal with a private landlord when they only have to do with one person. Uh, are there any questions? My, my son is um, legally blind in uh -huh. dusk and darks, and also he wears hearing aids. So you had mentioned two things. You mentioned some kind of visual thing about the doorbell, which um, mm -hmm. I'd like to know more about. And okay. also this thing about the stove, the markers, when you can't read that writing, how would one even start to get more, where does one start to get information on where to find those? Okay. Uh, we do have a staff person at the uh, Independent Living Center uh, who deals with excessive technology, assistive technology, I'm sorry. Uh, his name is Tamar uh, Paul. Um, so he would have a lot of information when it comes to the markers on the stove. Braille Institute also has a ton of information. So those would be the, the best places to go to. Jacob? The markers on the stove, you can call SoCal Edison and they will do it for free. Oh, okay. Well, I learned something here too, That's, yeah. which is great. Um, yeah, as far as the visual, um, uh, uh, door uh, bells, uh, de uh, deaf organizations of uh, calling would be best knowledgeable how to get those. So basically when the doorbell rings, it would flash a light. It's fairly easy to install. Um, and we also have a, a staff person who serves individuals who are deaf. Her name is Sandy Kreitzberg and um, uh, I also forgot to bring uh, cards for her. She's fairly new. But uh, Independent Living Resource Center, one of the things we do is, if we don't have the answer ourselves, we'll try to find you uh, a place that can get you the answer. And, and a lot of it, uh, uh, we can provide ourselves. Yes. Do you have a, a location of office? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, our office in Santa Barbara is at 423 West Victoria. Uh, we're in the West Side Neighborhood Center. We went from the city. Uh, we do have brochures at our table. Uh, we have table four. Um, and then we also have an office in Ventura, uh, one in Santa Maria, and one in San Luis Obispo. So because we cover the tri-counties. Okay, any, any other questions? And I think uh, when it comes to making a place accessible, it's always best to work with one of our staff directly, you know, because everybody has different needs and it can always be individualized. Uh, I have another question. Uh -huh. um, when somebody needs help to make their um, living space accessible, do you have architects or, or designers like um, on uh, resources where they could go to or how do they know who to talk to to help them get the building permits and stuff like that? Uh, yes, my coworker <coughs> Tamar has some good uh, contacts. <coughs> so I don't know all the contacts he has, but he's definitely developing a good network of contacts that he can refer people to. Um, it's Tamar, T-A-M-A-R-R. -R. 
And last name is Paul, like the first, like P A. And like, like I said, I uh, he has business cards. I, I left the office yesterday in the middle of the night when I forgot to get his cards. Uh, but I, I do have my cards and Jacob's cards uh, at our table, so you can always um, um, uh, get the information when you call us. And we'll transfer you. Yes. Um, I'm guessing your answer will be Tamar, but um, it, is there some place or someone who has a list of things that would be available that we wouldn't even know exist or to ask about? Like, exa again, referring to being blind. So this thing about the stove sounds great, but what if there's things that I don't know to ask? Is there somebody who says, here's a list of all these things that exist? I would think that Tamar has uh, uh -huh. higher the list. I mean, <laughs> okay. it's, uh, uh, and like I said, we always work individual with every person uh, to find out exactly what their needs are and, and develop a plan. You know, if, if we don't have the answers immediately, we'll try to find the answers together. So that, that's basically always our goal to help people become and stay as independent as possible. Thank you. Yeah. Can also Google accessible housing check list. There's a bunch of wonderful check list for accessible housing in fact a group called the Kelsey just put out this document of 400 steps to take to make an apartment accessible, which is a bit excessive, but if you want some ideas, I would Google check yes for accessible housing. Great idea. These days you can find so many things on the internet, you know, it's... Uh but like I said, if you do approach our agency, we're always happy to work with you and, and find what helps you best. Uh, if you later remember a question, you can always find us at Booth 4, uh, Independent Living Resource Center. We have a tablecloth with our logo and, and um, so we'll be sitting there until 2. <laughs> <laughs>